everyone and welcome back to another day of summer of self-care. If you are new to this channel or to this series, hello, my name is Tori or Victoria and this summer we are talking all things self-love and self-care. So everything from travel to food to fitness to skincare and hair care and mental health. Um, so if any of that interests you, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a video. If you know me, you know that being mindful about the things that I put into my body is really important to me because I do think that to a certain extent, we are what we eat. And if we're eating things that are nourishing and giving us energy and nutrients, we're just gonna feel a little bit better than if we're eating things that aren't doing those things. <laughs> but that being said, I definitely follow an 80-20 rule, so 80% healthy, 20% fun. And healthy can also be fun, which is what we're doing in this video. So I thought I would share with you guys a healthy, easy recipe for a Tuscan white bean soup. It's got veggies, it's got protein, it's delicious. So we're just gonna have fun with it. This is not a formal recipe video. We're just gonna have a good time. There will be cooking, there will be dancing, there will be eating. So let's get started. All right, so for this recipe, you are going to need some onions and garlic, uh, some carrots, some zucchini, some celery, some potatoes, some white beans, um, whatever dried herbs you want. I'm just using some dried oregano. I'm gonna throw some bay leaves in there, um, some veggie stock or veggie bouillon, and some kind of tomato. I'm using tomato sauce, but you can use um, tomato paste or fresh tomatoes or whatever you want. Um, or you can skip the tomato, totally optional. My intentions of making this video is, well, for one, to show you a really tasty recipe, but also to show you that cooking can be fun and not stressful or rigid. Um, all of these ingredients are totally optional. If you're missing one of them, don't let it stop you from making this um, because you can really just throw whatever you want in there. Um, if you have squash but you don't have zucchini, do that. If you feel like broccolini, throw that in there. Um, so really just have fun with it, experiment with the taste, the ingredients, um, and the only other thing you'll need is a good playlist because cooking is so much more fun when you're listening to some good tunes. So let's get cooking. It can be distracting though, because you're gonna want to dance and sing the whole time, but you can do that while you cook. So all of the amounts for this recipe are also super flexible. I have a smaller pot, and I'm just one person, so I'm gonna be making a smaller amount. So I just cut up a little more than half of an onion and two cloves of garlic, and now I'm gonna saute these with some olive oil uh, while I cut up the rest of my vegetables. All right, so we just put some olive oil in there, and we're gonna add that. We're also just gonna add a little bit of tomato, not a whole lot because we don't want this to overpower the soup, unless you want like more of a minestrone-y, tomato-y flavor. Um, we just wanna just give it a little bit more depth. So we're not using a whole lot, um, but again, have fun with it, do what you want. It's also really important to salt as you cook things. Um, that, way, ooh, that, way every step, uh, that way every step gets a little bit of flavor. I'm gonna turn the flames down a little because that is sizzling. So next I'm gonna cut up one large carrot and probably two or three stalks of celery um, and get some water boiling in here. So ideally you would have been able to cook the carrots and the celery with the onions and garlic, but I don't have big enough pans. I'm in a studio apartment right now and these are the only two pans I have. Um, so again, flexibility. Um, so once the onions and garlic finish cooking, I added them to some boiling water with some veggie broth and salt as well. And now I'm just sauteing the celery and carrots. I'm kind of running out of room too, so I'm not really sure if the potatoes and the zucchini are gonna make it. Um, if you have bigger cookware, I definitely recommend adding these things. All right, so these have been cooking for about seven minutes or so, and I cooked them with some rosemary and oregano. Um, and so just to soften them up before we add them there and kind of let them release their flavors. If you don't want to do this step and it's too many pots, you can totally just boil everything together. So yeah, that's totally an option as well. So now I'm just going to add this to the pot, and I decided to cut up a little bit of potato and add that to the to the pot. Um, and we're gonna skip the zucchini just because there's not room and I gotta prioritize. I 
I also threw a, a bay leaf in there. I broke it in half and threw that in there. And so now we're just gonna kind of let this all stew together and we'll probably throw our beans in there pretty soon as well. If there's any Italians watching this, sorry, the music's too loud. My sincerest apologies to any Italians who are watching this. I know, I am fully aware this is not the traditional way to make Tuscan white bean soup, um, but we're improvising. It's also a plant-based recipe, so usually you would add some kind of cheese to it, but we're not gonna do that. So I think we'll add a little bit of nutritional yeast towards the end. And so I had to change my shirt because the other one was super thick and I was getting really hot. Uh, but this is all cooking together. Um, I also added some black pepper, which I don't think I showed yet. Um, so while that's all cooking, you can have a dance party. So this is getting nice and thick and creamy. Um, and I realized that I wanted some greens and usually you use kale or chard, but that is very hard to come by in the Netherlands. So I just got some spinach, so we're gonna rinse that and throw that in there towards the end, just so that it wilts, but it doesn't like overcook. And honestly, I taste tested this and I don't think it needs nutritional yeast. Um, if you wanna put like vegan cheese in there, you totally can, but it tastes so good like this, I think I'm just gonna leave it. If for whatever reason at this point you've tried it, it doesn't taste very flavorful, you probably haven't added enough salt. So I would add more of that, um, or some more veggie broth, um, or just something to kind of give it a little bit more sodium. Because with soups, it can be very easy for them to turn out a little too watery. Um, so yeah, taste test as you go. Definitely before you serve. All right, so it is ready to go. It's probably been cooking for about 30 to 35 minutes. You want to let it cook for a long time because that's what lets it get kind of thick and creamy like this. I honestly don't know why. I think it's because the vegetables have kind of released their starches a little bit. Um, and the beans have softened, the potatoes have softened. Um, so you want it you want it creamy like this. You don't want it watery. So now that that's done, I'm going to turn off the heat and it is time to eat. Which bowl would make a better thumbnail? I think I'm gonna do this one. So some behind the scenes, <laughs> this is how I make things look pretty because I don't really have a pretty space in my tiny little studio. That counter doesn't really serve photos very well. So I have these two panels of wood, just, just a fun little behind the scenes. That's not gonna work. Alright everyone, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope that you found it useful. I hope that you make this. If you do, please let me know down below. Tell me how it goes. It's the perfect recipe for a light summer dinner or lunch and I'm super stoked to dig in right now. So once again, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Uh -huh.